Hello friends. So our today's class will be on translation. In the last two classes, we discussed what is DNA replication and about transcription. So let us today see what translation is. Well, in the introductory part, we can say the pathway or the mechanism by which protein is synthesized is known as translation. So the question might come that why protein needs to be synthesized or the mechanism of protein synthesis. Well, protein is the functional unit of all the processes that takes place in our body. If we are to consider and see in detail then our antibody that is our immunity pro production cells or immunity providing cells, the food we eat, everything has protein in it. In spite of that, our body needs to produce protein for its various metabolisms. So the process in which these proteins are synthesized in our body is known as translation. So translation is achieved when the mRNA is synthesized or translated for protein synthesis from 5 prime end to its 3 prime end. So we can say that the direction of protein synthesis is from 5 prime to 3 prime end. Basically to accomplish or comprise any process we need some materials or some things by which we can achieve our objective. Similarly for translation several components which are required are amino acids, the transfer RNA or also known as tRNA, the messenger RNA which is shortly known as mRNA along with amino acid tRNA synthesis, the functionally competent ribosomes protein factors and of course ATP and GTP a source of energy. Question may arise why source of energy is required. For example, you can consider a bicycle, a petrol running automobile or anything energy is provided. In case of bicycle, the pedaling of pedals by the rider provides the energy or fuel for its movement while in a automated automobile the petrol or diesel combustion provides energy. Similarly, the ATP and GTP molecules provide energy in all the cellular processes that take place in an animal body. The steps which are uh, comprising the protein synthesis process as a whole are as usual the initiation, elongation and termination. We have already discussed in the previous classes initiation is the starting of any process and once a process is started it continues until it is terminated. So elongation and termination follows initiation. Now initiation, unlike replication and transcription the process of initiation in translation is little complex and it, we will discuss it minutely at every step with diagrams. So basically the initiation in, in protein synthesis involves the assembly of components. Here what happens several components which we have seen earlier required for the translation process assembles together and activates the process so that it starts. The components which assemble for the initiation are the two ribosomal subunits. The ribosomal subunits along with the messenger RNA, amino acid, tRNA, the GTP and the initiation complex. Now the initiation complex or the initiation factors. What happens in prokaryotes there are three initiation factors. They are known as IF1, IF2 and IF3 while in eukaryotes they are nine. Now what is IF or initiation factor? They are nothing but factors or codes which helps in the starting or excitation of the process of translation. Ribosomes. The very first requirement for translation was we said in the previous part two ribosomal subunits. Now what are ribosomal subunits? So to study that we will see first what ribosome is. Well ribosome is the large complex of protein and RNA. What happens during our studying of cell structure we have always mentioned ribosome as the protein factory of the cell. So this ribosome comes into play here. What happens is that the ribosome is consists of two parts, one a larger part and the smaller part which are assembled together to form the entire 
ribosome. As you can see in this diagram, the structure of ribosome, it is shown by a light subunit and the heavy subunit. They are designated by the or nominated by their Sedberg unit, which is also termed as their sedimentation coefficient. Now, in ribosome, there are two sites, that is the A site and the P sites. Now, let's see what A and P sites are. Well, if you see in this diagram, the RNA has three sites as mentioned over here, A, P and E. You can see in the above pitch, uh, part, A, this mentioned as A for amino acid site, P for the peptidal site, and E for the exit site. What happens is that, suppose, consider uh, one of your close friend came to meet you. You and your friend both are sitting in the drawing room and gossiping. Suddenly an official partner or a colleague of your father comes and they sit in the drawing room. So what you do? You both shift to the drawing, uh, sorry, from the drawing room to the bedroom. And after that, when your work is achieved, your friend exits. The process continues or will continue whenever such happens. In this case, similarly what happens that tRNA or the transfer RNA, it will bring amino acids which will first sit in the A site. Subsequently, when tRNA will bring another amino acid, the amino acid which was sitting in the A site, it will move to the P site and subsequently the tRNA which brought it will reach the X, E site on the next step and move out. The process will go on and on in a similar fashion that whenever a new amino acid will come, the previous one will shift from A to P site. Now let's see what transfer RNA is. We have said quite a many times till now tRNA transfer RNA. So basically it is a specific type of tRNA or you can say RNA which has the function of transferring amino acids from one side to another. You can see it has four arm like structures and is, this model is known as the clover leaf model where two of its sites are most important. One is the amino acid attach, attachment site which is at the three prime end and at 180 degree opposite we have its another site which is the anticoton site. What happens in the anticoton site is that it provides or it gives the basement for attachment of the amino acid which is to be transcribed or inculculated or you can say to be input in the protein synthesis process that is in the ribosomal air site. Now let us see how the initiation takes place. Till now what we discussed that is the ribosome, the ribosomal air site, P site and tRNA they all are the positions or helping sites which we will encounter now during the process of initiation and elongation. I request if you have any confusion till now to please rewind, get that part clarified else the coming part will be little hard to conceive. So initiation, in initiation what happens is you can see in the diagram the ribosome smaller part that is a 30th S subunit it at attaches with IF3 that is initiation factor 3 comes and binds with the 30th subunit. In the next step what happens the 30th subunit along with the initiation factor 3 complex now comes and binds with the mRNA that is the messenger RNA. You can see in the given sequence above there is a site a G G A G G where the subunit comes and binds. This cordon sequence or this part is known as the shine dalgano sequence. What happens is that in this is the specific codon, coding part where the transcription sorry translation will initiate and the subunit will come and bind over here. As soon as the uh, initiation subunit comes and bind there what happens is you can see in the above part of the diagram the IF2 that is initiation factor 2 it binds with the FMAT tRNA. FMAT tRNA refers to a tRNA which has methionine in its, in its first cordon binding site. They combine together comes and attaches 
with the 30th subunit process where you can see AUG that is methionine is binded with UAC that is the F methionine subunit is or amino acid is brought by the TNA and they bind together. This entire structure or the <coughs> complemented unit or combined unit is termed as initiation complex. So if you are ever asked what is initiation complex, you have to give this whole structure that is I have 2 methionine tRNA, I have 3 and the 30th subunit. Following this what happens, the 50th subunit or the bigger subunit of the ribosome comes and attaches just at the AUC or the initiation site and immediately at that point what happens is the initiation factor 2 and initiation factor 3 they are released because the process has now already started and there is no more need for them to ever now they are removed. This process is fueled or the energy for this process is supplied by GTP as you can see on the left side of the diagram a GTP molecule is converted into GTP. So triphosphate molecule is converted into diphosphate molecule with the release of an inorganic phosphate and the process evolves energy which is used for running this process. Now when the ribosome has been assembled completely the two tRNA binding sites are created that is the A site and P site which we discussed in the earlier part of the video. Now what happens one after one tRNA will bring amino acids and they will enter the A site as you can see the A site is vacant and amino acid having pro is coming towards the A site. As soon as it will enter you see the pro and the methionine amino acids they are both sitting at the A and P site. After that as soon as pro will sit at the A site what happens P, the methionine will move from P site to E site that is the exit site which I have said earlier at this position what happens is the tRNA gets detached from the methionine or that is the amino acid and a peptide bond is formed between the two amino acids. The process will now keep on continuing as you can see another amino acid sir has been added. In this cyclic process what happens whenever a tRNA containing an amino acid will come and sit at the A site, the amino acid or the tRNA which is at the P site will move to the E site that is the exit site and the tRNA will be removed but the amino acid which has been brought it will not be removed it will form a peptide bond with its neighboring amino acids and the peptide chain will keep on elongating. Next what happens in the process of elongation is continued and it gets terminated when there will be a termination site or termination codon. As discussed earlier there are three termination codons which are A, AG and AGA. So whenever in the RNA sequence there is the codon of UAA is A, AG or AGA what happens they do not have specific anticodons for them and the process is terminated. Once the synthesis process is about to be terminated now the part has to be released because there are no more addition of polypeptides. So this is released with the help of RF or known as the releasing factor. When the release factor will come and bind at the A site, the polypeptide chain will be released from the ribosome and this polypeptide chain is nothing but our protein. Once the translational process is over, there are certain post-translational modifications. Now what are the need of post-translational modifications? Imagine a new baby is just born. You will not leave the baby naked or under any harsh environmental condition. In our body there are a lot many of, of physiochemical process going simultaneously. The protein which has been just produced it is a nascent protein and it is hyperactive or it might also be dominant. In that case uh, what happens is that your body might not need the protein immediately it might need it after a few period of time or on a larger scale after something. 
so what happens is that trimming the first process in trimming what happens if there are certain extra amino acids attached to the protein they are cleaved off the phosphorylation many a time it happens that the proteins are active or inactive depending upon the addition of phosphorus uh, phosphorus to sorry phosphate to their terminal chain part in this case either to activate or to inactivate phosphorus is added in glycolysation process what happens is the proteins are targeted to become a part of the plasma membrane these are the proteins which are integral part of the plasma membrane when they are formed by the process of translation they are brought to the cell membrane and incorporated in it and the last modification is the hydroxylation hydroxylation is very important because it gives the proteins a 3d structure and provides them with strength well with this we complete our translation and thank you